I lived through a very tumultuous time. You know, this was, I was a teenager in the, the end of the 60s. I graduated high school in 1970. So already I was particularly caught up, you know, the whole counterculture and all that kind of st good stuff. My name is Michal Muchnik. I am a artist. I've been, I'm from Philadelphia originally. And I've been living here in Crown Heights for about 50 years now. So you right. mentioned you're from Philadelphia. Um, can you talk about the home that you grew up in and what your experience of Judaism was like growing up? Yes. So um, I was living in a predominantly Jewish suburb of Philadelphia. Um, I say predominantly. There was a lot of Jewish families there. Philadelphia is known as, well, at that, in that time as like the conservative Judaism capital of the world. Nice synagogues, different things, a lot of people going to them. Uh, I had, so I had like some knowledge of Judaism, at least from that angle. And we, I, we went to like Hebrew school three days a week after school and this, that, and the other. My experience was okay with that. Um, but when I turned 13 and we were bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah, almost all of the youth checked out, basically. And that's a whole other discussion. My family was very Jewish minded and, you know, very proud to be Jewish and things like that. But it was very limited when it comes to actual observance and that kind of thing. During your childhood, would you say that you were passionate about art? Was that something that from a young age you knew you enjoyed already? Not from a very young age. I mean, we, we have there's a lot of creativity in my family, actually. I never thought of it about as, as like a painting artist. We used to make a lot of things, do a lot of things in the neighborhood. We used we made a whole miniature golf. We made the whole thing in our basement. We did things like that. We used to have like shows and all kinds of stuff. We were very creative. But when I became already like young teenager and I wasn't that sports oriented, um, I started spending a lot of time doing, yeah, like art and it just became a very big passion. So you're 18 now and you said you wanted to go to art school. I lived through a very tumultuous time. You know, this was, I was a teenager in the, the end of the 60s. I graduated high school in 1970. So already I was, I, I was particularly caught up in the, you know, the whole counterculture and all that kind of st good stuff. And being an artist <laughs> really fit that, that whole thing. And, um, and then when I went to, to art school in Rhode Island School of Design at that time, it was, they had just broke, like, let down the guards. There was no rules, really. It was, there was just every, all the liberal stuff. I just, just was just pouring out and all the creativity, everything like that. It was very intense and like, it was not all rosy. So, how did that whole culture affect your art and the beginning of your journey? In art? Well, it's interesting because during those times, like, I did a lot of sort of, you want to call, for lack of another term, we'll call it psychedelic style art, if you want to call it. It was my own. It wasn't like those sort of standard. Hate Ashbury type of posters, um, very intense, very deep. But then my life changed, and I, I had enough of that. And it was like I started to look for something more serious to focus on my life. I got into like sort of health foods and this type of thing. But one thing led to another, and then I just found an interesting community of people who were like me, and and they had become baltruvas. They had started to keep Torah mitzvahs and become observant, and I just sort of fit in. You're living in the 70s, you're in art school, it's an exciting time, it's very creative, very liberal. Mm. Um, your Jewishness at that point was, what was it like? You mean like my, or my spirituality? Your spirituality, Jewishness, because you mentioned that you I, grew up proud to be a Jew as a kid. Yes, did that, did that I mean, change? I was when still you... quite aware of the fact that I was Jewish. It's never, that never changed. Um, it was more like I thought of... The, global religion or even other types of, you know, Eastern religions. I was searching, searching. It was really a search. I, I, I was searching for something more and more and more spiritual. And it, it was, um, it just didn't stop the search. So you said you were searching for spirituality right. during that time right. in art school. Um, was there a specific event or incident that led you to take a very, you know, religious turn um, or to find yourself veering towards a community that was, you know, not just spiritual, but, you know, practically observant and religious and pretty ultra orthodox? Look, because I wasn't living like this observance, you know, from the minute you get up to the minute you go to bed and everything in between, 
I didn't really exactly know what I was getting myself into from that standpoint, which like n during the times of like the 60s, people were searching and they were going for all these spiritual things and they were getting very high, quote unquote, whatever that, however you want to um, interpret that. But then not integrating it in the world that we're living in on a daily basis. It was just not balanced. Whereas um, I just found Torah has, is imbued with the Hasidic teachings, was able to take you very high, but at the same time bring it down and be able to be also practical and to integrate it, which is what I did with my art, basically. Was there one part of Judaism in particular that drew you, or was the the whole theme and feel? It was not one thing, but I, I think that um, the first time I, ke I kept Shabbat, Shabbos, I was actually blown away by the, the, it was a certain peaceful feeling that was just penetrating that I, I just never felt before. When you started learning more Jewish ideas, right. um, how how influenced was your art by those Jewish ideas, by those Hasidic ideas, oh, if oh, any? Oh, very much so. In fact, when I was in the yeshiva, which was, they started a program in, like in 1972, and um, the Lubavitch community started a, Yeshiva for those who had not studied in Yeshiva because you couldn't just go in and you weren't up to that level of study. Just The two years I was there, I didn't do much art because I was studying most of the time. Um, when I, after that, I got married and I was, I left Yeshiva and started working as, you know, a working artist. Um, I started taking all these b amazing, like, Torah wisdom with the mystical ideas. There's a lot of parables, and it just gave me just an infinite amount of ideas and things that I wanted to portray actually in the art. And that's what I started to do. And then I actually started exhibiting them all over and, and um, showing a slide presentation of my art and what the meanings behind it were. And so it became, you know, a very exciting part of my life at that time. As a, as a Jewish artist, as a Jewish Hasidic artist, right. do you feel a sort of responsibility to teach and educate through your art? Oh, I do. I absolutely do. And I don't know, I, I don't know if that, well, teach it, yeah, it's okay, but it's more like share. Like I find this is a, a tremendous medium to be able to share on a sort of a deeper level um, what some of these, you know, concepts or whatever are portraying and I enjoy that part of it very much and as I mentioned I did these exhibitions and I, I definitely use the opportunity to teach and people enjoyed that very much they wanted to know what the pictures meant and I would have either like placards with some of the explanations or I had the slide presentation at the beginning of the art show and then that got people to realize there's a lot more in there and that would you know evoke questions and all kinds of interesting things. And they liked the art too, it seemed, because they bought stuff. So I mean, that was like practical right. too. I was able to make a living at it. Can you tell us the Hasidic or Jewish mystical idea behind this painting and how you went about communicating it through your art? Yes, um, I heard this um, teaching from uh, the first Lubavitcher Rebbe and his name, his name was Shneer Zalman. And he taught us that the Aleph is actually made up of other Hebrew letters. We have the letter Yud, the top, and then we have a letter Yud at the bottom. And the Yud at the top represents uh, Hashem, God, and who's higher than the heavens, but you know, we, um, Hashem is all. But we have the, the little crown here representing the, the king of kings. And then the Yud below represents the Jewish people. And then the Vav, the letter Vav, here's the letter Vav, joins the two together. And the letter Vav represents like the ladder of Amuna or faith, or the Torah, the teachings of the Torah, and the mitzvahs, the commandments that we, that we do. And that this joins us with Hashem, God, bringing his blessings down to this world, and we get closer to him with the, the performance of those. So this is called the Ring and the Rose, and um, this I, this idea came about because um, uh, in the Song of Songs by King Solomon, 
he likens the Jewish people to a rose sub, sub, surrounded by prickly thorns. And it explains there that um, the commentators explain that it, just like a rose maintains its beauty despite all the thorns that are surrounding it, so the same way the Jewish people have maintained their faith in Hashem and God despite all the different ideologies and different things, persecutions and whatnot that happened in the course of Jewish history. And, um, and through thick and thin, Hashem is with us, helps us. So you're an artist and you identify as a Chabad Chassid, would you say? Yes. Okay, how do those um, paths sort of work in tandem? Do you ever feel like being an artist is sort of one side to you and being an observant Jew is another and they don't always work so peacefully together? Right. I mean, it's very interesting because I get, I get this question a lot. And I don't see a conflict at all. In fact, being that I, I live a Torah life and it's all under the, 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 the Torah, certain things are like not appropriate to paint for anyone. I'm not interested in painting something that's not appropriate. So I don't have a conflict with that. But the part of doing, like I mentioned before, I, I have, there's no end to what I would like to paint. So I never could possibly get anything close to the time to paint the different ideas that I would like to portray from, you know, Hasidic teachings. So how do you integrate the two that you mentioned? It's it's natural to integrate them. So how do you integrate Judaism into your art and the artistic expression into Judaism? I learned a lot of and spent a lot of time doing doing all kinds of different things with materials and different things in art. So that I call that sort of the body of the picture, the colors, to sort of, to extent, the, the materials you use, you know, how you put things together and that kind of stuff so like to me that's like the body of the picture then you have the like the soul of the picture so i don't see it different as a conflict that, that the fact that that that, that hashem god gave us <laughs> our souls and you know enclosed into a physical coarse body it's the same conflict you want to call it a conflict it's the same it's the same um paradox I direct the, the art and what I want to do with the ideas I want to portray and, and try to do it in, a, in an innovative way or something interesting or something beautiful or to, to bring out a particular uh, emotion or concept or whatever. So it's just, and every artist would do that in their own way. A lot of people say, you can agree or disagree with this, mm -hmm. that art is a form of, it's a spiritual expression. Mm -hmm. um, there's something that even though it's done with material objects, there is something spiritual about it. How do you feel about that? Would you agree and or disagree? And if yes, why? Oh, I totally agree with that. I mean, I could be given the same materials. I could be given two paintbrushes and six you know, cans of paint or you know tubes of paint and a, a canvas, and the person next to me been given the same thing. And what we paint is going to be just, not just different. You are given this physical thing and you end up that you have the, you have the power to act, make a spiritual entity out of it. Because when someone looks at it, first of all, forget what you experience when you're doing it, but then the person who's viewing it is going to have a spiritual experience I mean, it could be a lousy spiritual experience, or it could be a very elevating experience, you know, a spiritual experience. But it will realm, it is in the realm of spiritual. There's no question about that. How did your family respond to you becoming more observant? Um, <laughs> at first, my parents were like really, they were okay, not more than okay when I when I became observant but then when i like sort of became hasidic <laughs> they were actually very upset um they had a lot of i don't know what do you call it preconceived notions, notions about that um they tried to sort of get me to leave yeshiva um but Literally, it's just when I became uh, engaged and, I, and and started Jewish home, and then they met some of the like families and friends and all these things. They became actually, and then especially with the grandchildren came. I mean, they were just and my father even helped me with framing my art on the side just to be helpful. And they would they were just very very supportive. 
I think when I first became observant, I guess naively so, I thought that, oh, now I'm doing what God wants, like everything's going to just be great. <laughs> like everything, my life's going to just be smooth and work out and all this kind of thing. And um, life has its challenges, no matter who you are, no matter how observant you are, no matter this, no matter that, life has its challenges. It's just like things happen. And, um, and you find that you, when things are, we'll call them a little darker or difficult or challenges, personal things or whatever, or family matters or whatever it is, that you really have to dig deeper. And I found that that's when a lot of the teachings, actually the teachings of Hasidus, Hasidic teachings and Torah teachings actually takes all this into, it's, it's all included in it. Like you can really find, you know, ways of deepening your faith, um, um, and the, there's a growth that comes forth from that. So that's a maturing process. So I wanted to share that. Mm -hmm.